Today I'm going to be going over a little technique I figured out on how to increase the efficiency of my seed starting. And what I'm talking about is increasing my germination rates of my seeds, speeding up my germination times, and saving me some electricity in the process. Now you might already be using one of these seed tray heating mats here, but the problem is that they're really inefficient. The problem with these seed mats is they are really only designed to keep the root zone about 10 degrees above whatever the ambient temperature is. Every time I looked at it, it was on. The, I, have a, I have a temperature controller for this as well, and it was just always on. So what I came up with was this little insulating cover that I kind of made here. I'll give you a look at how I put this together in a minute, but basically it's just a top and bottom. I constructed it out of this, uh, it's like a, it's a bubble wrap, but it has a foil back on it. Now, this stuff has been great for a couple of things that I've used it around here. I've used it to line kind of my the shelves of my of my seed starter area here and it's kind of given a good reflectivity making the most out of the light as well. But it's also got a good insulating property. It's used for like insulating ductwork and things in, in houses. For tomatoes or peppers, especially like the super hot peppers, you need 80 to 85 degrees in the root zone. It's 60 degrees in my basement, 60 to 65 degrees. Then the best temperature I'm probably going to get out of this thing is about 75 degrees or it's going to run constantly. It worked better than I even had hoped for. I was hitting... 85 degrees easy with this seed mat and it was hardly running because it's keeping all the heat inside this dome even when it's off so it would warm it up to the temperature it would shut it off and it would stay warm inside of there which is fantastic that's what you want it's just like insulating your house you don't want to just keep heat in the house and letting it go outside you want to keep that heat inside the house and this is the house for your seeds here so this is what i came up with and i'll show you it's just a very simple thing here and so I put it together. I just kind of made the tray. I notched the corners. I, I put the sides up and I used like a foil tape on the corners here. Now you can use any kind of sticky tape that it'll adhere to it. It doesn't really take any special kind of tape. And then what I did was I left a slot in the bottom here so I can slide in my, my heat mat. So I put the heat mat in there and then I put my tray in there and then I put the lid over the top. And now this still allows me to check on my seeds. I can pull the top off nice and easy and check on my seeds, put it back in and it insulates. Now I would definitely use the temperature controller with this. Don't just plug the seed mat into the wall. It does have just a regular plug on the end. And so it could be plugged right into a wall, which I don't recommend because then there's nothing regulating the temperature. And especially if you're using this insulating box you might hit a hundred degrees i don't know i haven't tried it you know so you certainly want to regulate the temperature properly even without this insulating box i wouldn't use this thing without some sort of a temperature regulator i can't even believe that they sell them without one to be honest with you so the heat mat's about 10 bucks the controller is about 20 bucks. It's a good investment. It'll last you some years if you take care of it. With any electrical product, there is a risk for fire. So, you know, take your precautions. Plug your, your uh, temperature controller into a GFI outlet. Plug this into a temperature controller. Do not use this without a temperature controller. I'm going to say that again. Do not use this without a temperature controller. It will cook your seeds potentially, especially if you're using like some type of an insulating device like this. So, you know, use this at your own risk, but I've been using this for about a month now. This thing doesn't even, you know, you touch the bottom where this heat mat is, and if it's regulating the way it should, it's not even hot to the touch, 85 degrees. Your body temperature is 98 degrees. It's not like this is just gonna burst into flames. Of course, you have the risk of something shorting out and things like that. That's with any electrical product, your lamps, your TV, anything. This thing has been fantastic. I had some pepper plants that I germinated in here, seeds that, that said that they could take up to a month to germinate. I got germination in about seven days with this thing. I was easily keeping 85 degrees in here. And not only was just the base of this thing 85 degrees, it was 85 degrees throughout this entire container. And that, that's a big thing because you know, you take the probe from that temperature controller and you push it down into one of those seed cells. So it's touching. The, the probe is touching the bottom of this or close to it. So, of course, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep that temperature warm down in the root zone. But 
the seed is at the top of the cell pack. The seed is way up here. And so if you have a cold temperature up above and it's 85 at the bottom and it's 60 or 65 outside of this dome, that temperature is going to go from 85 to 60 out here somewhere. So at what point you're keeping the seeds 85 degrees, really the best way to do that would be to lay the probe on top or keep it very shallowly into the into the seed cell so you could get a, you're getting an accurate temperature at, at the depth that the, that the seed is at. Just kind of show you a little video clips of, of how I put this together. It was really simple and really you could use any insulation material that you wanted to construct something like this. You could probably even put it in a wood box and it would it would be better than than this seed mat just sitting out on a shelf because especially if you're on a wire shelf or something like that, you have the ambient air underneath touching this thing. I mean, it's, you're just costing yourself a bunch of electricity. So take a look at how I put this thing together and check it out. And then I'll give you a little look at some other uses that I use this, uh, this foil back for as well. All right, so you're gonna to wanna to know the depth of your tray. Mine was two and a half inches. And then I measured the overall length of the tray and the width. And cut out my piece you can see it's really easy to cut this stuff with a pair of scissors it comes in a roll and then i went ahead and measured out uh, for the notches that i was going to cut out of the corners because i need to fold this up and tape it together now i didn't make a lip that's going to fold up on the front side of the tray because i'm going to add a little piece in there and i'm going to leave a, a slot where i can slide in the heat mat so go ahead and fold it over, give it a little crease, and then get your corners taped together. I used a foil tape. It's kind of like a metal tape. It works really good for this stuff. It's kind of designed for it, but you could use any tape, as I mentioned earlier. So after I got the three sides all taped together, I did kind of go over it and give it a little crease with the flat side of my scissors, put the tray in, and then I took a little strip of the bubble wrap and I attached it across the front. And I made sure to leave a little slot on the bottom where I could slide the heat mat in. So now I need the top piece. On this one, I wanted the long sides to overlap down onto the bottom piece. So I made my long sides three and a half inches instead of two and a half inches on this. And that would allow it to kind of interlock together a little bit better. Again, just give it a little bit of a crease here with the flat side of the scissors. And then I went ahead and I taped all my corners together. It went together really easy. And you can probably see here in this video that the sides, uh, the long sides are a little bit longer than the, the short sides of this. So after I got that all set, I did do one further step. I took some of that foil tape and I put it on all the long sides. And like because that's kind of a metal tape, it added a little bit of rigidity and it allowed me to give it a nice crease and kind of keep more of a 90 degree angle. So that is one benefit of using the foil tape to, to build this thing. And then as you can see here, it all fits together really nicely, overlaps, nice 100% seal on the box. And it still left me this slot in the bottom that I could slide my heat mat in between the bottom insulation and the tray. Everything's nice and accessible. So here is another one of the ways that I've been using this bubble wrap foil backed uh, insulation stuff here that I made that, that warming tray out of as well. And that is to line the trays of my seed starting area here. Now what I did, I put a layer on the bottom, which is helping insulate them off of the metal shelf. And I mean, I can touch the metal shelf and I can touch this and I can tell there's a big difference. This metal feels cool to my hand and this does not. The other thing is I'm salvaging some of this light, light that would spill out onto my floor here outside of this is now being bounced back and, and made use of by my seedlings here. And now I know there's going to be somebody that's going to say, oh, there's a better reflectivity and, you know, just paint it flat white and blah, 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 and whatever. But you know what? I don't care. This is working. I don't need it to be any more efficient. It's something I had on hand. It's cheap. It's effective. It's serving dual purpose. It's insulating and it's also uh, reflecting the light back. So this is working great for me. And I know for a fact that this is, this is saving me some light here because these seedlings that were on this side of the tray before I put this front flap on here and I only had the three sides lined with this stuff, they were all leaning in. They were all leaning towards the back wall of this. And that's because those sides were lined up as they're probably going towards the bulbs. 
and towards the side with the reflectivity. And then I put this stuff on the front side here, and I mean, I could practically watch them stand back up straight. I mean, I'm exaggerating, but within a couple of hours, they had all stood up straight from where they were versus they were all just leaning to the side. I mean, it was very apparent they were growing towards the back and to the point it had me concerned that maybe these lights were doing that. But then I looked at the seedlings in the back and they weren't doing that. None of my seedlings along the backside, they were all going nice and straight up. So they weren't growing towards the bulb of the light. They were just, you know, this side here, the light was all spilling out. There was more light inside to the back and so that's why they they went there and so so this like i said this has been another good use for it it's saving me some temperature in there i mean i could tell that they're they're at a little bit better of a temperature and like i said that's just another way that i have found to use this stuff so that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed it i hope you found it useful if you did please click the like button if you want to see more of my videos hit the subscribe button share it with your friends and I'll see you on the next one. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.